Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Terror Beach by Scott Donnelly Currently, I'm surrounded by a dense forest. We have a campfire going, and my dad is roasting hot dogs. My brother Kieran is silently sitting on a log with the hood of his sweatshirt pulled tightly over his head, silent. And my mom, well, she is in an understandable daze. I'm a little shaken myself. But you know what? If we would have just been here camping in the woods in the first place, no one would be this on edge. It was a three-to-one vote that took our vacation to Pelican Pier Beach and not the Maple Wilds National Forest for camping. Now, I think the rest of my family is completely regretting not taking my side, not joining my vote. But instead of enjoying our time together, my family is still picking algae out of their hair, trying to shake the horrifying memories, and I... Well, I'm just glad to be away from that ocean. When we arrived at Pelican Pier Beach, walking down the crooked wooden steps and onto the sand in our swimsuits and bare feet, I was already in a bad mood. I didn't want to be there. I didn't like the ocean. It scared me. I'd watched too many Shark Week specials, studied too many sea monsters, and spent way too much time wondering what lurked in the deepest parts of the ocean that humans had yet to explore. And even though I knew it was fictional, there was still a small part of me that thought Cthulhu could be real. My parents and Kieran didn't waste any time getting into the ocean. They tossed down the beach gear as quickly as possible, haphazardly put up an umbrella, and then all raced into the surf like they were stampeding lifeguards. I, however, remained on the beach, standing by myself in the hot sand. For a couple of minutes, I watched them splash and frolic about. I wondered what the scene would look like if Cthulhu rose from the depths behind them. I wondered what it would be like if the gigantic tentacles of the Kraken were to rip through the surf and throttle everyone. I wondered if panic would ensue if a dorsal fin sliced through the surface. Would it look like a frantic scene from Jaws, or would it be handled in a calmer, more organized way? After my daydreams, I watched the seagulls fly above me and people down the way play beach volleyball. That's when I decided to take a walk. I kicked my way through the heavy sand, moving around small shells and unearthing hermit crabs. Then, in an area where there wasn't anyone else around, I stumbled across something strange. It looked like, well, a mermaid's art project or something. I picked it up and looked at it. It was a conch shell about the size of a football, decorated with colorful seashells, barnacles, and also filled with shells. I could hear them rattle around inside like a baby's toy. Surely it had to have been created this way and wasn't a naturally forming thing. Things like this simply didn't exist in nature. That's why I didn't feel bad for taking it from the beach. I was guilt-free from disrupting the natural order of things. Later that evening, after ordering in a dinner of fish and chips and some sodas, the four of us ate until we were full. I may not have liked the ocean, but I did like the food it supplied. The fried catfish was amazing and the seasoned fries were a perfect side. With full bellies, we called it a night. My parents went to their room and Kieran and I shared a room with the bunk bed. I slept on the bottom. It felt like an hour or so had gone by. I could hear my brother snoring above me and both of my parents snoring in the other room. I thought about the cool find I'd recovered on the beach. 
I rolled onto my side and pulled out the decorated conch shell from underneath the bottom bunk. Using the moonlight that reflected in through a small window in the room, I looked at the shell over and over, trying to make sense of it. Natural or handcrafted? That was the question of the day. A salty breeze blew in through the window, fluttering the curtains. On the breeze was another smell, a scent and odor. It smelled like dead fish. That's when I heard the thud on the wooden planks of our porch. It was followed by a wet, dragging sound. I sat up in bed, listening to the repetitive nature of the thud and drag. Someone was right outside our beach house. I jumped out of bed and raced to the window. I looked out, but only caught the fading glimpse of a shadow moving around the corner to the front door. The knocks weren't crisp like normal knocks. They were sloppy and seemed to be made by someone who hadn't ever tried knocking before. I crept out of my room, and through the house beams of moonlight shot through all the open windows, creating a glowing crisscrossing pattern throughout the house. I put my ear to the front door. The conch shell was still firmly in my grip. Hello? I quietly called out, trying not to wake my parents. Open the door. A deep, gurgling voice said from the other side. The sound of it unnerved me, and I stepped back away from the door. I went silent, but that only angered whoever was outside. Open the door. The voice repeated. No, I said. Go away, or I'm going to wake up my dad. He's an orange belt in karate. You don't want to mess with that. Suddenly the door burst in, and I got a look at the terrifying thing that had been on the other side of the door. It was large, draped and dripping with dark green algae and stringy strands of seaweed. Its face was that of a deformed fish, and it spoke to me again while entering the house. Give me the conch shell, it said. I swallowed hard, but for some reason I didn't want to give up the shell. I held it firmly. N -n 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 no, I stuttered. I was afraid, but it was my shell. I'd found it, and I wasn't going to let any type of seaweed monster take it from me. For all I knew, this was a dream, and I was going to wake up any minute. My parents then came flying out of their room. The crashing front door must have woken them. Hey! My dad shouted at the intrusive monster. What's going on here? Get out of our beach house! We have it until Monday! Tell your offspring to give me the conch shell. The monster gurgled angrily. It belongs to my young one. I knew it sounded like a baby rattle. But now I couldn't help but wonder how many more of these goopy, slimy, sea salad things were out there. See, this is exactly why I don't go into the ocean. My dad looked at me. Give it that shell, son, he said. I shook my head. But I found it! It's my young one's favorite plaything, the monster said. I stood my ground and vigorously shook my head. Then I'll take your things, it gurgled. It reached out for my dad, its arm extending like a growing plant, and wrapped its stringy, seaweedy fingers around his neck. It quickly pulled him back in, and within one heart-stopping moment, devoured my dad in one gulp. I backed up into the wall. My mom screamed, which woke Kieran. He came out of the bedroom, rubbing his eyes. What's going on here? I'm trying to sleep. With his other arm, the kelpie monster did the same thing to my brother. In a split second, he was devoured as well. I didn't know what to do. Instinct told me to hold the conch shell tighter and not let go, so I did. Seeing this only enraged the monster. It came further into the house and grabbed my mom by her legs, lifting her into the air and dropping her head first into its mouth. With one loud final gulp, my entire family was gone, consumed by the algae-clad sea monster. The monster looked at me next. Menace glistened in its flat black eyes. Give me the conch shell, it gurgled one last time, foamy seawater spilling from between its lips. I was shaking now, so much so that I could feel my bones rattling beneath my skin. None of this would have ever happened if we just went camping like I wanted. I extended the conch shell out with my shaky hands. The monster grabbed it from me, 
and just stared into my eyes. You made the right choice, it said. With those gurgly, bubbly words, it regurgitated my parents and Kieran before my very eyes. They came up and out, completely coated by a sticky, slimy substance. I watched all of them writhe, disoriented on the floor, but when I looked back up at the monster, it was gone. Only the open front door stood before me. Before the door was the night, the gentle sound of waves crashing on the beach, and the salty breeze. My parents and Kieran all sat up and started to wipe away the slime and algae from their eyes and mouths. It looked like they were all okay to me. Can we please just go camping next summer? I pleaded. My dad quickly stood to his feet. He seemed alarmed and spoke with urgency. We can go camping now! Everyone, pack your things! We ride at midnight! Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, Scary Stories for Kids.